Okay, so the two doctors, King, continue saying, in our mouths, we have tasted many herbs, wood, metals, and stones of the Saha world, I mean, of our physical world. Saha is a name in Sanskrit terms for our world. Okay, they don't translate it, just as Saha world. Because all the Buddhists understand that. Just like Samari, you all understand. So sometimes I say Samari, I don't translate it. So 108,000 flavors. Oh, it's a change here. 108, not 84,000, not 2,000. 108,000 flavors. We know in detail, bitter, sour, salty, bland, sweet, and pungent flavors and the like, in all their combinations and inherent changes. We have a throughout knowledge of whether they be cooling or warming, poisonous or non-poisonous, meaning they have to know all the healing property and the uh, uh, contradicting properties of all the herbs, the wood, the stone, whatever they use to combine to heal people. Okay, This is truly... Nah. You know, an, a, a glimpse into a physician's world. In the old time, they don't test it on animals. They don't have that many, they cannot catch all the animals who test it. Nowadays, we're so cruel, we test it all on animals. Luckily, it's getting less and less now, all the way my heart just cannot bear if I think about it. It's just wrenching me, you know? Okay, so the doctors in the old time, in our physical world, have to taste the thing themselves. Sometimes they know it's poison, but they have to still administer first on themselves, bit by bit, and sometimes they get poisoned. Yeah, sometimes they can cure themselves, sometimes not. But they have to administer it on themselves first, taste it first, before they can, uh, you know, prescribe it to patients or try it on patients. These are the true doctors of the old time. They have to go and harvest the herbs and pick the stone, those stones with mineral property, healing property, and the wood, yeah, whatever. They have to do it all themselves. Or maybe just a few assistants. If the doctor are more famous, they have probably more disciples, and they help him also. But not like nowadays, no? not so easy. And they have to taste all that to see whether or not they heal them. First, they put poison or something that make the patient ill, and then they try the medicine, see how much, in order to heal them. They think this may heal, but they're not for sure, you see. They're doctors, physical. They don't, they're not like uh, gods or something. So they have to try it, you see. Try until it, they heal themselves. First, they have to get sick or get poisoned, and then they heal themselves. Sometimes they overdose because they don't know how much, sometimes mistake, and maybe they die or gravely ill. This is a true fate of physician. So we nowadays take all the doctors for granted. But they are also very working very hard. You understand? They mingle among sick people, infectious patients, day in, day out. Sometimes got infected themselves. See? So these Two princes, uh, physician, continue talking. While serving the thirst come one, we came to know that the nature of flavors is not empty and is not existent. Not empty, not existent. Nor is it the body or mind. Nor is it apart from body and mind. We became enlightened by discriminating among flavors. Uh, they they concentrated, you know, not like you discriminate by <laughs> by your taste and then you enlighten. If it's so good, I go pick all the herbs, <laughs> give you <laughs> two different herbs, and you discriminate between them. Oh, this is peppermint, <laughs> this is basilicum, and you be enlightened. It's not like that, okay? Otherwise, I can do that. Yeah, it's not. Who knows why? Just discriminating between the herbs, flavor, they became enlightened. Who knows why? I'm not giving you a cup because, okay, you just have to learn. 
Why? So that they don't get contaminated between each other? They're not contaminated? Yeah. Anyone else? No cup, just your wisdom I want. Yeah. Because it took their concentration to like know the herbs? I mean the concentration to discriminate? Yes. Yeah, that's one point, yes. They know truly how to distinguish between two herbs. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. Mm. Okay, you force me again, huh? <laughs> Dig it out for me, huh? Okay, I pretend again that I know something. Buddha's blessing. Mm. You're next to the Buddha, yeah? Somehow you get <laughs> help from him invisibly even if Buddha did not proclaim that. If you're next to somebody who shower, you know, some water will sprinkle on you. If you go in a perfume shop, somebody spray perfume on this person, you're next to it, you also get a few drops and you also smell something, huh? They follow the Buddha wholeheartedly. At that time, they even forsake their own jobs and fame and power over the patients and the world outside, family, and I think they became monks. Huh? They believe so much in the Buddha. They love the Buddha so much. They want to be with him, to learn from him, and then to help the world in a larger scale, not just by medicine. So they are so pure already. All of them here, they're not normal monks. They're Buddha's monks. They're next to his house every day is monks. They talk to him every day as monks. They listen to the Buddhas every day as monks. Yeah? They're begging for food only monks. They have only two, three robes monks. They have no house, no wife, no kids, no nothing monks. Hmm? They are with the enlightened master monks. <laughs> okay? Right. So now, because of that, not because of the herb discrimination, you sidetrack by their profession, yeah? Just like the magician, you know, they do some hula hula hop and you keep looking at their movement. You don't know the other thing they're doing. They distract you by one movement while the other hand, the other movement secretly, they do something to show you something, yeah? Because you're distracted. You don't see where you should see. You just think, oh, medicine man, of course, the medicine, the herb. So we have to concentrate. Nah, you see that? Yeah. Huh. Got you. <laughs> got them, got them. <laughs> yeah, distraction is our problem. <laughs> yeah. So it's not easy, huh? But of course you pretend you don't know, so that I pretend I know. You want to give me all the <laughs> credit, and I thank you for that. Mm. Good, good people. Good heart. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah, very charitable. Yeah? They don't want me to lose face, you know? So they say, oh, we don't know. Just talk nonsense. So that master say something. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway, you just want to keep me here. That's what it is. Longer calendar. Uh, so that I can sit here all the time, be your bodyguard, babysitter. Yeah? So, you see that? All right. Mm. Uh, so... They were serving the thirst come one, you see, that's when they know the flavor is not empty and not existent, not this, not that, neither that. They were serving the thirst come one at that time. Yeah, giving him medicine or maybe some checking out, you know, the body is anything good. Maybe just a, a general checkup. Or maybe Buddha has some pain at that time, or some coldness, or something. And they were serving him. Huh. Know that. Okay? It's not a normal, like they just sit there and smell in the herb. Oh, enlightened! <laughs> wow. So cheap? No. They were with the, ser uh, the Buddha, and they were serving him even. Meaning taking care of him. Physically, personally, closely. Yeah? Maybe touching here, touching there. And at the same time, maybe just soon out by the Buddha's blessing. Meanwhile, we're half, halfway still the hand still touching or making medicine, but the soul went up. Huh? Therefore, all pervasive huh? and secret at the same time. Just like I see only one bottle and the other four I don't see. Huh? 
truly personal experience. How can you not see? If you see one bottle, then you see the other four. Take <laughs> them together. Understand then? And if I didn't put it there, how come I return? They are there. Yeah, and same with the sofa or Taiwan become Europe. I call three people, our disciples. They all know it. I'm in Europe, still in Europe. No master, you in Taiwan. Si Hu, master, Si Hu. <laughs> three persons confirm with me. And then slowly it fades off, you know, and then I, I recognize the same thing again, the same Si Hu. But it wasn't the same to me before that. And I was working in my office. It's not like I sit in meditation, nothing to do, dreaming about Europe, uh, reminiscing about Europe, miss Europe, nostalgic about it. No, I was busy working on my desk and looking out the window and said, huh, where am I? You know, <laughs> like Europe, not, not, not the sea that I knew. I know my place. I've been there many years. How can I not uh, recognize my own office and my place outside, you know? Same trees, same yards. Even if we change the trees, nothing changed. Maybe the tree grow bigger now than 10 years before, but it's still the same surrounding. You know, I walk in, walk out every day for years. How can I not know? <laughs> now you know that, okay? So because of that, I, Otherwise, I would not understand what they mean here, or how come secret and pervasive at the same time. It is like that. It's truly, what's saying in here is the truth. It's not fairy tale, nothing. It's very simple, logical. You can be in two worlds at the same time. Many worlds and physical worlds at the same time. And that is for sure. So therefore, he, they were serving the first come one. You see, they were checking out on the Buddha, uh, administer medicine, or checking out on his health, okay? And of course, you're so near to the Buddha, huh? Yeah, what would you get, huh? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> All right, so simple, right? Because normally, they have been tasting herbs for eons already. They say cowpaths already. I mean, thousands, millions of years they've been physicians, tasting all kinds of herbs already. It's not the first time. So when they were testing or checking out the herbs for the Buddha, only at that time they suddenly realized, oh, uh, not the same, huh? It not come from this and not come from that, and not from here, not from there either. Suddenly they realized that, how can? Thousands of cow paths pass already. Only now they realize it. So it cannot be that they <laughs> uh, concentrate on the medicine or herbs, nada. Mm. You have to listen, okay? One, two words, difference. Make a big difference of the meaning. Right. So the thirst come one, sealed and certified us brothers and named us as Bodhisattva physician king and superior physician. Of course, they are superior now. They are not just tasting the herbs, but they know the empty nature, the, the illusion of nature, of anything, including the herbs and the medicine. Yeah? They know the illusion, nature of our world. That's what it is. So the Buddhas, ah, of course, this is a superior physician. Not normal, not just knowing the herbs, but knowing the true nature of herbs and all things. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have take time to record the Buddha's teaching after the Master's Nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present, and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. Wow. Ah, that's very good that I can relax a little bit among you. Mm. I feel all of you who came today are very good. Yeah. I feel that way, and I was very happy, very, very happy. Because sometimes some 
a few worms, you know, rot the apples. <laughs> and I don't like that. I never like that. It's a ruin the atmosphere for everybody else, you know, for most people, and I don't like that. I do forgive. I forgive all the time, immediately. Forgiving and uh, having around is different, okay? I told you already, I can forgive the mosquito who bites me, but I don't go and look for mosquito and, and pat his head or hug him and say, Oh, I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah? And if a snake bites you, okay, you run to see the doctor quick. Don't stay here and pet him and, oh, snake, you okay? You also have Buddha nature. I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if the tiger there, you run, okay? <laughs> if he bites you already, especially, you run. You don't stay there. Oh, tiger, I forgive you. <laughs> oh, you already run, go get doctor, already heal yourself. Don't go and look for the tiger. Again. Oh, you know, a few days ago, you bit me. I forgive you. Come have a hug. <laughs> Are you hungry still? <laughs> yeah. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Forgive. What? You turn the other cheek. You turn the other cheek. The cheek is okay, but not the tiger. Not the tiger fang. Huh? Turn the other cheek, okay, another day, but not the tiger fang, and not go look for another person who beat you the other day. Say, Here, here's another cheek, brother. You forgot. <laughs> you forgive, it's okay, yeah? But don't go and, and show another cheek and say, You forgot the other cheek. <laughs> uh, and tell him, You know, Jesus say, If you beat me once, Slap in one cheek, I have to give you another here. <laughs> here it is. I'm a follower of Jesus. Go slap me another cheek. Uh, yeah. You must have compassion and wisdom, both. Not just compassion, okay? Wisdom is important. I told you many stories, huh? Yeah? One snake, you know, follow a teacher, become to become enlightened. They all can. Huh? The animals, they also can preach to you even. Any animal's kingdom, they have one teacher. Hmm? And they listen to that teacher in their level. Okay? So they, they also are enlightened in their way. Okay? Maybe four level or third level teacher, but they have a teacher. All animals, group have. Okay? Or kingdom have. A uh, race, you know, animal race, they have one. So I told you many stories, you know, there were one one poisonous snake, you know, and he followed a teacher, so he didn't bite anymore. He became good and quiet. But one day the teacher came back and saw him bitten, black and blue, half dead. Teacher said, what happened to you? The snake said, oh, the, the children, they came and they swing me around and beat me up and throw me on the rock and all that. So I became like this. So the teacher said, oh. Why did you do anything? You told me I should not be violent. <laughs> I should not bite. Then the teacher said, I told you not to bite, but I didn't say to you not to his. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be violent. Eh? You don't have to be angry, but you can react uh, accordingly, okay? Mm. So that people also leave you alone. Mm? Otherwise, these people also create karma if they harass you for no reason. Huh? Hmm? Defense, self-defense have many ways. Yeah? doesn't have to be violent, no? Okay? But have to defend yourself. Like, okay, I'm a practitioner, okay? But I lock my house. Why do I have to have God in front of my house? One more person <laughs> working. I just lock, okay? <laughs> They don't say, Master, why are you scared of you? I'm not scared. I just take care of myself, okay? So you don't worry, so that nothing can happen, even it, it, if it never happened. Prevention is always good. Don't tempt people. Don't leave your money all over the place and, and tell people, money is laying all over my house, you know? I know you're honest, I don't care <laughs> how you know. Okay? Why 10 people? Understand? Yeah. 
Also the same with the clothing. That's why you should wear, you know, more decent clothes, yeah? Not too tight trousers to come in here and show in everything that you got. <laughs> they don't come here to see what you got, yeah? Try just to wear more decent clothes. Maybe buy some tunic when you come here, okay? Loose clothes, more comfortable to meditate. I know you used to wear in you know, tight things at home. It's easy, convenient to work at home. I know that. Buy a couple of tunics, okay? Like cover up to the knees or something like that. Loose, yeah? Not tight. Airy. Easy to meditate. Cool, okay? Not sweaty. It's not obligation. It's just an advice. It's better for you, okay? Nowadays, many uh, women wearing things is too, too poorly, no? Nah? Not that they don't have money, <laughs> they just wear it poorly. <laughs> if you want people to respect you, respect yourself first. Understand? Mm -hmm. If you want people to, like, uh, how's their hands off you, <laughs> you prevent it. Huh? Okay? Uh, because sometimes I see some, like, girl, young girls, they don't understand much. They like to go with the fashion. They wear clothes almost like nothing. Okay? And it's winter. Up here is all open door, <laughs> freedom. <laughs> Down here from almost at the hip, below, also freedom. It's very good, very good to have freedom. But <laughs> freedom means also responsibility. Take care of yourself so that you are safe. Hmm? You're safe. Uh, it's maybe good looking, according to your opinion, but it may be also meaning something else for the, the men, or even uh, for other women. <laughs> women are not all women. Huh? Mm, yeah, just like men are not all men. Yeah. It's not their fault, it's just, just their karma like that. Hmm? Their karma. And they've been born like that, they've been programmed like that. Huh? Okay. I think we should go, huh? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going now. Within 20 minutes, because the bacteria will be there. Hmm? Within 20 minutes after eating, anything should brush your teeth. Hmm? Or if you don't have, quickly then rinse as much as you can. Floss. Hmm? Good night then. Love you. I appreciate your attention and and you're really trying very hard. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm not sure if I can try as hard as you, if I am you. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. See you. <laughs> yeah. All of you. Love. <laughs> All of you. <laughs> God bless. Buddha bless.